From now until the 28th of August, you can save 30% on literally everything on my store, including t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, and more. Be sure to check it out. Link in the description. Discount code. Wibby Flibby. As I mentioned, I wanted to do a few videos on the content I had from Gamescom of this game, and I wanted to talk about now specifically the racer side. So, if you didn't know, there are new cars available straight away. That's the first thing you probably realize in this video. New cars are added in this DLC as well, so it's not just the cop cars who also get some extra cars for the racer side. This includes, so far, that have been confirmed and seen, we have got the Lamborghini Huracan, the Ferrari F12, the Jeep Wrangler, and also a Nissan GTR. There are some other cars available and coming to the game, including a new bike. The new bike is known as the KTM 119. 90RC8. Oh, and I know somebody's going to complain about the, the pronunciation of that, but I have no bloody idea about bikes, all right? But there's no bikes in the game. Anyway, to the actual game mode information about being a street racer. So to start the event as a street racer, well, you hit the crates. That's how you activate it. And you can do this even if you do not have the DLC. The DLC is how... Ugh. Well, as far as I'm aware, you do not need the DLC to play as a racer. If you have the crew and the crew wild run, whatever, you can actually just jump on straight away and play as a racer and run away from player police straight away. Obviously, you don't have access to the police cars or the new DLC cars. Again, everything is not being a million percent confirmed thus far, but that seems to be the way it's going on Ivory Tower. Always do awesome stuff like this. Giving content out free for those people like the level 60 cap increase, the new parts, all that kind of stuff is going to be free. And the only thing that is paid is the cop cars and being a cop and the new DLC cars being added to the game and a few extra little bits, which we'll find out more very soon. Now, as a racer, your objective is to hit the crate and get to the objective before the police bust you. The, another way, reason why it's different, if you actually respawn to help your racing buddy, say that you're not the lead one running away, you go back on track to try and catch up back to the action, you will not lose any of your power-up kind of replenishments. It will not reset like it does with the police, obviously, because with the police, they are obviously trying to catch up to you and take you down, whereas your racer friends, they're just taking down the cops, helping you out a little bit. Now, as a racer, you get two power-ups. Power up number one is a flashbang, which bloody, it's a flashbang. What else do you need me to say? It flashbangs and makes the screen go white for all the cops in that vicinity. And well, it screws them over basically. And then you have unlimited nitrous, which gives you unlimited nitrous for a while. You may remember if on the lap knockout events in where obviously you're driving for, uh, for the lap knockouts and you're kind of in the lower ends of the event, you get a big speed boost and that NOS lasts quite a while for you. Which is very useful, as you know. But it's extra useful, especially when there's a whole bunch of bloody police chasing you. That's not fun. Well, it is fun. That's, it is very, very fun. It's fun, the fact that you need to get your butt away from those those things. Because, my friend, they, they will bust your butt. And then, obviously, there's a reset to track for you as well. But, again, doing that as the, the lead racer necessarily isn't very useful. And, obviously, they you can't do it when the police are near you, that sort of thing. But... Yeah, that's how the racer works. The racer has to get to her objective. Anyone helping that main racer can use the same assists, but obviously their main objective is to just defend the main player. They do not have to reach the end. And obviously the cops will focus on the main player because they do they can't really arrest, as far as I know, the normal characters. And there isn't much point in doing so. You're aiming for the lead guy, taking him down, and, well, claiming your reward, which will be probably a very high part, because I'm assuming all of your cars, if you play the game, are level 50 parts, you get yourself some nice level 60 parts. I actually, in this whole session, managed to get some cars upgraded a little bit. I wish I had a lot longer with the game, because I would definitely have basically maxed one or two of the cars out to the new highest level, see what the new highest level is, and then compared it against the other ones. Now, Quick thing about the cars, obviously. I'll talk about more more about those as we get more info on what cars are being added to the game, that sort of thing. And I'll speak about them specifically and properly in the next video, which will be talking about every other little detail in detail, if you will, about the crew expansion other than the fact that you are doing these events. Now, again, these events are scattered around the map. And you will be able to activate them whatever, you, like, if you don't have the DLC or if you do, it's absolutely fine. Again, you can use the, the new cars if you have the DLC. As I stated in the previous video, you do not get the police after you, the player police after you. 
for doing, you know, bad things in the game. You'll get a normal AI police after you as you did before, which have been toughened up a little bit. So it is not like Need for Speed Rivals. It's more like a hot pursuit mode, like a Need for Speed hot pursuit, if you will. So that's probably the best place to match it. And obviously some other games examples as well, but Hot Pursuit is the first one that comes to mind to me because it have proper police events. Something I didn't mention during the police video is that you can actually switch police car. I'm not exactly sure if you can switch racer car. I assume you can if you, even if you are like the lead racer, but obviously that's going to give you a massive disadvantage switching mid-race. But as a cop, you can switch to whatever class during the race. So if you go all of a sudden into an off-road you know, part of the race, you can switch car. And as the main racer, I don't know if you can, but obviously it's going to affect you negatively if you do so. And I'm assuming the little racers following you will definitely be able to, to be sure. So again, couldn't really confirm that because I didn't try it. Because obviously, if you're, if you're the lead racer trying to run away, you're not necessarily going to... The, the last thing on your mind is that, you know what, let's switch vehicle. Yeah, let's switch vehicle. If the event starts to look like it's going to start off-road, stay in an off-road vehicle, pretty much. Basic idea, really, isn't it? Again, for those that have not seen the original video, I did a video on the police and how that differentiates itself between the racer and, obviously, the police. If you want to check that, I'll link it in the description down below because that was the first video and it tells you about the power-ups and that sort of thing, what the objective is as a police player thing. But other than that, I'd love to know your thoughts on this DLC and how it's been handled in the comments and what it reminds you of, that sort of stuff. Whatever you fancy, just let me know down in the comments. But anyway, be sure to leave a like if you found this useful or helpful in any way. Subscribe if you are new and love to hear more content about the crew, Forza, every racing game possible coming out now. Drive Club VR, JC Sport, I'm a cover it. So be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of this DLC. And will you be picking up the DLC is my question. As I said, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.